Ding, da, ding, da, ding, ding. <coughs> Let me turn off this little box again, crazy. All right, good night, everybody. <laughs> C sec matches tomorrow. The prophecies have long told of this moment. The time would come when five years has transpired and you would be tested by the Caribbean Examination Council on that day. On that fateful day to see how, if you are worthy, to see if you have proven yourself worthy to get a one or to get a two. We, we already talked about threes and fours and fives here. Well, yeah, I'm going to be paced tomorrow. I'm going to start off with saying I wish you all the best. I'm going to be paced tonight. <laughs> this, this thing turning back on itself. I wish all you all the best. All you go on. Make all your school proud, make all your country proud, make this channel proud, make me proud. Um, do all your best, try and um, re remember everything. No, I've seen a lot of people messaging me about being scared on Instagram. A lot of people messaging me about being anxious. Being anxious. What you need to do is take this anxiety and transform it into... An, you, can't, you can't tell yourself... Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Especially people who suffer with anxiety and panic attack and go blank before exam. It's hard to tell yourself not to do that. You need to transfer that emotion into another emotion. The emotion of excitement. You need to realize that you're going to do something big. You're going to do something big. So it's okay to feel excited or anxious. But let it be something positive and let you, the excitement be transformed into putting in the um, don't let it transform into me. Let it be transformed into putting in the work. Putting in the required work. Right? It's okay. It's okay to be feeling hype up. But anyhow, enough talk. 753 viewers online. Wow. We start off big tonight. So, all you know, all you have to do, let the people on Instagram them know that things start. Uh, maybe I should give one more minute of just talking so I all can let the people on Instagram know. Things start, anybody who get any notifications late. That people on real people on my channel within the last maybe two hours or so. Maybe about 40,000 people watching different videos. Israel, 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 peace. I can't even read comments tonight, but I know people who watched the Jermaine Hatton video did well because a lot of things that he covered came. And the English exam was sweet with repeat something. I guess I'm, I get nice reviews. Nice reviews on that. <sighs> no, so one million is real pressure here. Right, let, get, let me start. For real, for real. Let me start. Let me start. 841 people. We done cracking last. We done cracking last night record, boy. It's just, it's just peace. It's just peace. People praying and thing. All right. So let the people let them know things start. We are about to, we are about to begin. The first topic we are going to begin with is bearings. Now with bearings, now Alia, if the chat but I know because the chat could be extra lit tonight. You see, it's hundred and something people and that might climb up to a thousand. We might break the thousand. If the chat but and you all feel free to minimize the chat, but the chat is be where some sometimes good thing is come through in the chat too. So the chat is be where the action is and help keep the study and vibes, you know. Thing, but we before we will be, I'll be trotting along tonight and I'll try to keep my talking and my in between chats with the chat to a minimum to a minimum, right? Yeah, so let go. Hey, we, we hit in a thousand brisk. So things that I need to know in bearings, things that I need to know in bearings, the bearing every time you have a point, you need to draw the north pole going like this. And people remember the north, this direction will be east, this direction will be south, this direction will be west. And you always take your bearings in a clockwise direction. So that's about it, day. And they know everything in bearings. <laughs> no, no, no. In bearings, they're also going to um, test you on the sine rule and the cosine rule. And the next thing that really, really comes in bearings and a lot is alternate or corresponding angles. 
So I'll just write alternate angles or corresponding angles. That's like if you have a line like this, and let me say you had the knot going like this, and you had the knot going like this. If you extend the purple line or the pink line, however, what color you see that as, if you extend that going this, like this, it means that the, this angle here is equal to this angle here. Right? We have some equal angles here and there. And you always have to look, look out for that. And some people train to look for the, the Z shape that really comes, that really cracks. That really, 1K, 1K, <laughs> that really cracks the... um. The, the code for bearings day that really 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 helps a bearings day all right so space all right so let's let's try a question that we do stick i'll we'll be doing one star random questions and by the way we really hard questions and i'll be taking opinions so what type of questions you'll want me to do but we, we run you some hard questions first. so this question, I don't even know where you're from. I think it's from 2007. Let me just see where you're from. Some people like to see the year. Um, I really don't know what year this is. I really don't know what year this is. Copy. I have to paste this to see the year. Um, I don't know what year this is. But does it matter? I don't know. No, 2014. 2014 January. This is 2014 January we're doing right now. 2014 January had a bearings question. Um, PQ is equal to 120, PAR is equal to 150, and QPR is equal to 23. So what we had to do here now is, is some is some calculations down there. But I just want to take a look at the diagram and just talk a little bit about bearings here. You know, this is your north pole there. Like this would be the bearing here. Of this from that, let me see what the, what information is given. The diagram below now joins the scale shows the position of three points P, Q, and R. P, Q, and R on a horizontal plane meaning it's a flat surface, and they give us they just repeat what we see in any diagram. Some P, so P, Q is 120, as the distance between P and Q. P, R is 150, and this angle here is 23 degrees. So not much was given, but already we see in a setup here. We see in a setup for the cosine rule. This setup here is for the cosine rule. How do I know that? Because anytime you see a triangle tomorrow, if you see a triangle like this, and somehow you figure out the angle here, and you have these two sides, so you're getting you're getting this kind of shape taking place, where you have two sides and an angle sandwich in between. Two sides and the angle sandwich in between, most likely they lack it to find out for the side opposite right and in that case we'll see we'll see any questions if they ask us to find out for this side in that case you'll use the cosine rule and the cosine rule will be in your will be in your formula sheet but it helps them have it memorized and know it good you know um it says that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a and if I label stuff here in this diagram, I'll label it in blue. If I label stuff here in this diagram, this here will be A. Sorry. This here will be A. This here will be B. This here will be C. And this will be capital A. So you want to put the angle opposite to the side. Now, the common letters I use to represent the side, the capital letters I use to represent the angle. So this angle A is 23. And then you just substitute. That's how you do the cosine rule. Now, I know some people may be in reach here in school yet, so this is like, whew, this is like, this is, are we doing the end game stuff now? This is the real hard stuff, people. This is, this is some of the hardest questions you would get. That's what we're doing tonight, right? And then we'll go back into maybe some of the easy things like graphs. Everybody want to do graphs and coordinate geometry and things. But we're doing some of the bearings, angle of elevations, matrices tonight. We're doing hard stuff tonight. All right, so let's go on and see what this question is asking and see if you can solve this question. Now, you will have to help me through this question. So, they want us to calculate to one decimal place QR. Immediately, we are set to A. This thing in plug-in, boy, this whole, uh, this whole laptop will cut off on me, boy. Where my charger, boy? Ali, let me go and find my charger there before the whole live crash. Where's this one, boy? Zubia! Yeah. 
Back on, we're back in the Getty. We've woke 1,400 people online. That's crazy. All right, so the distance QR, the distance QR, QR, QR. So you know we're going to hit them a little cosine rule day. Pop, pop, cosine rule, boy. So let's, let's do some cosine rule for them. This is how we activate the cosine rule. And I think people get answers there. We'll have, we'll have A squared is equal to B squared, and none of these questions I, I've done them before, so you'll get to see if anything happens, mistake, or anything, what to do. Plus of A. Is, uh, now, let's go down a little smaller in this point. We substitute. We're trying to find A squared. We're trying to find this. So, A squared, we could put QR one time, because A squared in this case is really QR for us. Then we have 120 squared plus 150 squared. Yes, get, yes, get big numbers. Because there's been kilometers most of the times. 50 squared, unless it's maybe a triangle. Minus 2B C cos of A. So minus 2 by the 120 by the 150. Um, cos of, cos of uh, 23 degrees. 23 degrees. 23 degrees. Now make sure you calculate 10 degrees. Let me see if I could pull up my fancy calculator that could solve matrices and all kind of thing. Where your calculator? It's your time to shine. Bam, bam, bam. This is the Casio FX115. ES Plus. And oops, there you go. And uh, hmm. Calculate. I don't want to come up by Windows Capture and Source. Source. Are you seeing the calculator? Day? Let me know if you're seeing the calculator. Day. Are you all seeing the calculator there? How about now? How about now? Are you seeing the calculator now? Yeah, man. See the calculator now. Alright, so we are need the calculator in this. We are need the calculator to do some of the talking. Alright, so uh, when you take out your calculator, you're gonna put in well uh, sometimes what traditionally we do in school is we call this get that and we call this get that. Just to make it less messy now. Now what happens like with every CXC question, every CXC question that I've seen so far, this this Oh no, that didn't happen here. That didn't happen here. Or oh, usually happen. So yeah, it, I, I was wrong. Or oh, usually happen. This turn star plus. This turn star plus. Um, so that's what you had to look out for because this angle here is normally be an obtuse angle, not an acute angle. It's normally be spread out open like this now. Bap, bap, and this is be a big angle like 120 degrees or something like that. All right. So let me see what happened. Now. Let me see what happened. Now. You don't rush the question. 120 squared plus 150 squared. Remember, you could work along with me. You could have the window open. You could go and do your other work. You could think. I'm just chatting along here, explaining, and we're doing some of the hard topics. This video will be kept up as soon as I finish this live. I'm deleting my multiple choice videos. I don't want that up tomorrow. So I'll be deleting the multiple choice videos just for tomorrow. I may put them back up after that. But my multiple choice videos, I told you all that, that's coming on this evening. So I now reach. This is amazing. I love your title. I love your titles. You really, like had to go and look on the book and calculate it. So this is one big nasty number again here. So so let me see what is really taking place. Um, oh shocks! I will get out on the calculator by hand. I show you what I do. So on this calculator, I just did. No, I could type in the whole thing, but I am not going to. I'm just showing you this. One twenty squared plus. Um, hopefully you're seeing that there. 150 squared 
G G G G G bam then uh press the equal sign and I get a number that's so how I get that and then now I'm gonna take away and I'm I'm putting this in I need to make sure that my calculator is in degrees up there I'm seeing degrees so what I'm gonna have is I'm not I'm I'm ignoring the negative for now because I put it here already so I'm just gonna put two by one fifty right? and I could actually with this calculator type it just how I see it by one twenty close brackets Open brackets by 150. Um, close the brackets there again. Then I can put cost of 23. 23. So it knows to multiply. So I press equal and I get this nasty little number here 33138.17472. You'll have space so you could, you could write out all the numbers. It's important to write out a good bit of numbers with this because you don't want to. Um, you don't want to end up estimating. You want to keep your, your um, figures as accurate as possible. So I'm going to put this number now in the calculator. Take away this number. So all I could do is leave it like that. And I could press 3, 6, 9, 0, 0. And I could put take away. And I could look for answer. Previous answer, right? Previous answer. And I'll press, um, I don't know. I'll just press answer. Answer. And I think the previous answer may be the one before. So I uh, press answer and that should give me it there. So I'm getting this figure 376.1, no, 61.82 uh, is what we see in there. But you have to remember that this is the square of that. So if I want to find the real thing now, the real thing I will have to do a little square root, square root of this number there, right? So I could just press square root of answer in my calculator. Uh, the right answer for them, I write it back. Square root of answer, and that should give me what the value is. So, and that's what I saw a lot of people getting that 61.3. So that's how you get. That's how you do that question. And I feel I picked this question to start with because I feel if bearings come, it will come similar to this question. It wouldn't come. Like, you see those questions back in 2007, 2008, 2000, and those earlier years when I wrote the exam? It wouldn't come like that. It wouldn't come long, 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 and long-winded. It's not going to come like that. It's going to come easier, like this. Well, not easier, but shorter. Shorter. The question's going to be shorter. They don't have... Back in the days, a, a, a bearings question could last 15 marks. That will never happen now, because the entire question, the entire question 9... Bearings come in in question 9. The entire question 9 um, is only 12 marks. And half of those marks has to go to circle geometry. Something to do with circle geometry. Right? So they would not they would not vanquish you <laughs> with a, a long killer bearings question again. Right? I've seen some people in pain watching this. But yes, this is how it works. So I'm going on to the next one. I'm going on to the next part of this. Now, if you do understand this at all, and you want to know about this, I have a video on bearings that you could go and watch. Whoa, 1,700 people online. I have a video on bearings that you could go and watch, and you could learn the whole of bearings, right? And then angular valuation, learn the whole of that as well. So then, next up, we want to calculate. So I feel I might do an easy topic next, and then a hard topic, and then an easy topic, and a hard topic, you know, just to keep it bubbling and to give everybody a little something. This here is for people who pretty prepared this, this question here. So let me just move the calculator out of the way. Right, cut. We did this. Now we need to calculate the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle. So anytime you get a value in this question in number nine, you need to put it in in the diagram. As that's advised, so you could you could be able to visualize what what is the next step. What is the next step, boy? So sixty one point three point three. There's a point there. Sixty one point three goes there. So now we want the the area of this triangle. <coughs> It so turns out that we could have we could have found the area of this triangle without knowing this third side. But some people know how to do it with three sides, but you can also use this formula for area of a triangle. Take note of it. Um, this is not the um, Heron's formula, however. This is just the sign formula for area of a triangle. The area the area of the triangle is equal to half of A B sine theta. Right? Half of A B sine theta. So that's how we call the area of a triangle, half of AB sine theta, not 
base by height divided by 2. So let me see some y's in the, com in the comment section if you know about this formula. Let me see some y's. All right, must, my comment section freeze here. Let me see some y's in the comment section. Right, so we know about this formula. I just responding to one set of different messages here at the same time. So, all right, so if you know about the formula, we could apply it now. So we could say a half, I think it was 120 and 150, and it was the sign of 23. So we're all getting for that value there. We're all getting for that va value. Let's, let's let the calculator do the talking again. So once again, we can plug in this in its entirety here. We can say a half, and since I you could actually write out a half like this, one over two, and then come here and continue in this calculator. Um, or you could have write 0 0.5 if you're not feeling to go through all that fractions thing. 120. Um, clicking, taking longer than just pressing it in the calculator. It's annoying. All right, and then sine of 23, sine of 23, one cell again, so I find I see once that different numbers and all going, oh, 35.1, 35.65, all right, so we get this answer here, so that, that has to be the area, now I always take a little peek and make sure that makes sense, yeah, yeah, that making sense to me, that making sense to me, just by that divided by two, yeah, 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 that, that, that song about right, that song's about right. So the area, we just look at that, right? So I'll, I'll just write it here for, for reference sake. Um, and the accent for everything to one decimal place. So put six there. Excuse me. Don't just stop. Um, don't just stop on this six. You have to stop across here. You know, if it, you raise the, I raise the five. I raise the five to six because the of the eight, right? The number that come after the five. Was greater than five. The bearing of p from q is this amount. Calculate. All right, and I even seen that question. So let me, let's try that again. All right. The bearing of p from q is two hundred and fifty-two. Calculate the bearing of r from p. Okay, we gotta go back to the diagram and paint this. Now, notice the thing with bearings. When they say the bearing of P from Q, it means you're starting off at Q, right? You're starting off at Q, and you're going to use 252. Um, Q is here, and the bearing of P from Q is 252. So this is what we're talking about. You, you start on Q, and you use the Q naught pole, and then you make a bearing going like this. Right, and then you make a bearing going like this, and that's 252. 252. Right, what's 252? Now calculate the bearing of R from P. R from P. Now they want us to calculate something here. What do they want us to calculate? The bearing of R from P. So they want us to calculate this. Because remember, they say from P. So we want R from P. It has, there are 10 questions, Kevin. There are 10 questions in C. X. Sir, 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 A is not 120. You make a mistake, sir. Good night, Amika. A is not 120. What is not 120? St. Lucia, do me just explain what mistake I make going too fast. So A is not 120. A is not what A? What E? What E? E is six one three. Um, okay. I did put sixty one point three. Did I say it was one twenty just now? 
Did I see it was one? I see in the chat saying A is not one twenty or something, but I did put six one three. Did I say something else just now? Uh, you did. I said something else. Yeah, you put one twenty where I put it. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. Well, if I did, if I did, I made a mistake. Oh, I put 120 in the calculator. Where? For half A, B, sine C. Oh, you know, this is correct. This is correct still. L let me explain this. For the people who say A is not 120 and I made a mistake and worried about that, it's it's all good. It's all good. This is how it works. Um, I'm using a new A now then. So I get say half C, B, sine A. So, to find the area using this formula, you have capital A here, you have, sorry, you'll have capital C here now, A, B. So, that's why you all get getting tired with that. So, there wasn't any mistake there. So, what, what, what I would have done before that question is just redraw the triangle like this, a quick sketch, and relabel my side so that I know which one is A. Right? Um when I was using this sine formula to find the area. Half A, B, sine C. This A is not the same A as this A. So maybe my bad in not explaining that to you properly. It's not the same A as in this A. We left that question. So let me see some whys if you understand, if you understand the problem there. So yeah. let me see some whys in the chat. Why, 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 why? Why, 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 So everybody understand, right? So it, it wasn't a mistake. Um, it, what you would have get messed up with there is the labeling of the A. So this A here is not the same A as this A. It's not 61.3. It's actually A, B, and C now we're using that, that sign formula. That sign formula is similar to the cosine. So you can take a little revision on that. I explain all of this in... Individuals already, right? So we're just moving forward. What we need to do now calculate the bearing of R from P. R from P. So yeah, we start off with a hard question here again, baptizing fire. R from P. So we're going to calculate this bearing here. So chat, give me an idea, give me some ideas of how you're going to do that now. How are you going to calculate the bearing of R from P? Three sixty minus two fifty two. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. That. that way could kind of work. Two K views. Close to two K views. That is insane, man. That is completely insane. Two thousand people from all over the Caribbean on the same chat, on the same live, taking in some ads. Right. So I seen people. Some people have the answer, but it's not showing up on. I had a click show, but it's just so many comments I can't pull it up, right? So the the, the thing we have here is 360 minus some people doing that 252, and I guess they want to find this angle here, and then take it away from 180, and then they'll find this angle here. Oh yes, you can do that as well. Um, the first thing. The first thing that I saw, and I'll just keep going, I'll just keep going because I know although there's lots of comments and questions here, a lot, a lot of people, maybe a thousand plus people are just following and waiting for me to keep going with the question. Keep going, sir, keep going, sir. So I'll just keep going. Um, 252. The first thing I saw in this here would be that I would lengthen this and this angle here will now be the same as this angle here. It's corresponding. You understand? So I lengthen this line here. And this angle here would be the same as this. Now, why is this important? Because I can find this angle. This angle is 252 take away 180. And once I have this angle, I'll have this angle. So I just need to add this to the 23, and that will be the bearing. Right? So once again, this is a tough subject. You may not catch it one time. If you don't catch it one time, don't ball down the chat. Right? That means you just need to go and revise it. You just need to go and revise it. A lot of people are catching it because they revise this part of the topic. So do, get a little scared just a little bit and go and check over this topic first. All right, so let's just do that quickly. So 252 take away 180. So 
So the work gonna be 252 subtracting 180 degrees and we'll get 2 and we'll get 7 72 degrees all right then it a new pen today I have another pen too but the last pen kind of conk out so you get 72 degrees and this this 72 degrees represents here now I'd have a diagram I prefer to work with that di a diagrammatic kind of explanation so I'll have this as my 252 so now I have my 72 degrees here and this is also 72 degrees so and they wanted a bearing going like this and we already were given that this is 23 or something 23 degrees 23 degrees so it's clear to see now that the bearing we want the bearing of R from P of R from P you all you know the handwriting is be the best of the best this is the best handwriting in the whole of YouTube here you can look far and wide you won't get any better than this 72 plus 23 so what you're getting is 95 well done well done well done 95 degrees good job people everybody who pull out a 95 um, I'm only going to get full max I'm already disgusting <laughs> Right, so this is a classic bearings question. This is as classic as I think they would bring it for you all in the exam where you use a little cosine rule and then you may use the area formula after you may use cosine rule and sine rule. I didn't get no sine rule in this question, but you may have to pull out the sine rule and then you'll have to show how you know corresponding and alternate angles to solve the rest of the question. Right? Are you ready for an easy question now? Ready to pull out an easy question? Let's look for a question and graphs that's a little easier. In the same year, let's see if you can pull out one and graphs. I know the best part of this whole life setup is when I start to sing. People they just be like, oh my gosh, I love this life. I love this life. I just love to hear her singing. Such a beautiful voice. All right, and I've seen anything in this. In this paper set up here by so all all the people who are custom on the chat I'll give my little monitor give my little monitor let me know how much likes it have what going on it have nine I see 1900 people online right now so therefore that means for sure there's 1900 likes on this video there's a whole set of mentions on Instagram <laughs> I don't know I don't know Hopefully, I'll doing what they're supposed to do and, and, and encouraging YouTube to share the video with as many CSEC students by pressing like as possible, as much as possible, you know. Right now, I'm looking for a graphs question. I'm looking for a graphs question, but um, like they've been stingy with the graphs question. But if we can find a graphs question, anything is anything, and we just pull back out something else. Anything is anything right about now. Yeah, all right. Well, this is this is a graphs question without graphs itself. Um, um, this question is on coordinate geometry. How many of you are ready for the coordinate geometry question? Once again, I did a tutorial on coordinate geometry. 90% of this syllabus I did a tutorial on. So, and that's why I'm, I'm skipping to live now just to feel out where people are at and how best I can help them. So ignore what ignore what year it is from. We just gonna do the question anyhow, right? Coordinate is food. Or coordinate is a lot of food. Coordinate is key. So a line JK has this as the equation that determines the gradient of JK. So everybody accustomed. This is why it's true of people who kinda 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 in this. Everybody accustomed looking at gradient like m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you're looking for the point where the two points are where the two points are we're going to find the gradient here. But the gradient, um, Justin, you put x in your answer. It's not x in the answer. Somebody has put x in the answer. There's no x in the answer. You can't use this because we're not given a point, but we actually given the equation of the line, and it's not in the form y equal mx plus c. So we have to change it in the form y equal mx. We have to get rid of this too. To get rid of this too, we need to divide the whole equation by two, and we'll be able to find the gradient. So when it when you give your equation. You need to see if it have y by itself. If, it, if the equation was like this, then the gradient is just 5. But the equation is not like that. There's a number there. There's that 2 there hamburg in the scene. So 
this is the work and you'll do for that. You'll bring across that too. Everybody going to get here, said that too. Y is now going to be equal to 5 over 2 divided by x plus 6 over 2. This is unimportant right now. This is the y-intercept we really came up here. Um, but leave him in there. So this this now is 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 in the form. It is in the form y equal mx plus c. Um, therefore, the gradient m is equal to five and two. M is gradient, right? M is gradient. That is what we have been using for time immemorial for gradient. Let's check out the next part of this question. That was food. Let me check out the next part. So you do not easy question and you're going back to a hard question again. Another line, GH is perpendicular to JK and passes through the point. Alright, so this is what is usually asked. In coordinate geometry, they'll ask you to do the equation of a line. When did you I'll know, just take it in some of the matrix transformation next. Okay. They'll ask you to do the equation of a line. Something with the equation of a line, maybe find the gradient, plug in a point, find the equation of a line, and then they'll ask you about a perpendicular line. Or they may ask you about a parallel line. Right? That's how they usually run these questions. You know, if the line perpendicular, the gradient... And a line GH that's perpendicular, meaning it meets at right angles to the line. The gradient will be M2 would be equal to negative of 1 over M1, where M1 is the gradient of the first line. So the gradient is going to be equal to the, in, the negative in, inverse of that, right? What we call the negative inverse. So it's going to be equal to negative 215, right? We flip it, we flip it, and then... Put a negative sign. Determine the equation of the line GH. Anytime you have to do that, you use this formula. Some people noted to use the y equal mx plus c formula, then find the value of c, then substitute it back. I find that a little redundant. Just use this formula, people. We need and um, we need the points x1 and y1. So the points x1 and y1 are actually up here. X1 and y1, that's the points on this new line. Eh? That's the points on this new line. It passes through that point. GH passes through that point. So now that is actually 5 going here. Um, sorry. No. Negative 1 going here. And it's supposed to be my bag. Negative 1 going here. And 5 going here. Right? And that's and the gradient now is negative two fifths. So you could put on the rest. People comment once that people commented on my other videos, that people are really killing all the other videos right now. X minus five. And you have Y is gonna be equal. Whoa, two thousand reach two K. So we can multiply, we can multiply people negative two. Negative two fifths x take away negative two so that into positive two because the phi's will cancel when you multiply there. Remember this multiplies there and then it multiplies there, right? You could use your calculator if it's not the best in, in um if it's not the best study best in I wanna see if it's not the best of the best in fractions, yeah. Restart from restart please. Yeah, guys. So I lost, start over, I lost, yes. <laughs> Alright, let me get a little start over. Some people say not, they lost. So we found the new gradient. We found the new gradient. Right? Using this formula, we find the new gradient. So now we're plugging it into this formula, which is just a which is just a formula. Take this one that plug in. Take this one that plug in here for now. I'll come back with it. Alright. So you you're taking this gradient and plugging it in here. And you're just plugging in these x1 and y1 values, x1 and y1 values here. Them blue lines may be making it more confusing. And then you multiply, you multiply out the negative 2 by x, negative 2x, and negative 2 by negative 5. And then you'll get positive 2. And I still have this, I still have this, this negative 1 line and on this side here. Now. So I have to bring that across. So I have to bring that across. 
and I'll get y is equal to negative two fifths. I've seen some weird answers in this comment. Why? No, no, still in tomorrow. Fine. Oh, CX entered the chat, and I really gone. Which people is this? Give up yes. Two negative two fifth x, and it'll be plus three. Am I seeing plus one in the chat? Negative one. Oh, yeah. Plus three. Plus plus one. I made a mistake. So I substituted the negative one, but this negative here was still still in the dance. That's why I got to use brackets. So this now turns to plus one. And when it comes across, it will turn to negative one. So now we're going to end off with y is equal to negative 2 fifths x plus 1. Right? So when you're substituting, it's good to show your substitution line just like this. Let's say you make a mistake. This is this line there is called the substitution line. Alright. So the dog hungry. I know my dog, but I didn't name a dog. That dog will back for, for no reason. Do it the other way. What for me? Uh, is this 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 formula just a nice formula that a lot of people is used to just quickly solve that start over from here yeah, ding 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 all right let me move forward let me move forward that chat is real mayhem right now mayhem in that chat absolute mayhem um what are we looking at matrix transformation is what we pump into matrix transformation so now we do some explanation on matrix transformation now if you want in depth detail me drawing and thing explanation look at the video if you want last minute cram and refreshing information look at this live if you want to go through it in depth again understand it fully look at the videos go back and type in my name and type the videos and click on it and you'll see me explain it in depth if you just feel like you're on about 60 70 80 percent already then this live is going to be juice for you this this is you just put this on and had this running while you study it all right, so what are we looking at now? Matrix transformations. Matrix transformation. Now, I'll include in some, I'll include in some vector translation in this only because it can come in this kind of question. So, uh, let's 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 see if I can find a question. Somebody in the chat look for a question on matrix transformation. Um, I'll do some explanation in the meanwhile. In the meanwhile, let's say we had a graph, and we have a point here. And let's say this point is this point is two four, right? This is point A, and it's two four. I can translate this point. I can do a whole set of things to this point in terms of transformation. I can translate it. I can rotate it. I can reflect it. And I can enlarge it. Or I can do a combination transformation. Right? And you need to know all. You need to know all. How it how it is work. January 2008. January 20, 2011. January. 2011 January. So let me write down. Let me write down that. Jan 2018. Jan 2011. And some other people. Somebody. I think somebody has been 2014. June. So we look at those people just now and see what's going on. We look at those people just now and see what's going on. So you can do all sorts of things with this point. You can translate it. You can rotate it. You can reflect it. You can enlarge it. Right. So then, um, if we want to translate it, these three, these three require matrix matrices. Now, unless it comes in section one, if it comes in section one, they will not say nothing about matrices really. They will just ask say, about maybe the scale factor of enlargement and find the center of enlargement or what line it reflected on. But if it comes in the second section, they will ask you about using a matrix to produce the operation so the last trick you could use a matrices for that you see this one this one you have to use a vector so i just talk about that briefly because it's very easy to use a vector 
um, for example, if I said A and I'm going to use a transformation of T, and when you're using the vector, is add it, right? I'm adding it to get P. And the vector T now, let's make the vector T 2, negative 1. It means, and remember, remember my, my people, my people, remember that this 2 is X and this is Y. This is the X and this is the Y. It means that now I need to come with this, this, this transformation that I'm using here. I'm going to drop a transformation on point E, which is here, um, and it's it's a translation to be exact. And I'm going to add on two. It's it's going to look like this. Point A is two four. I'm going to add on two and take away the one because this this is the this this one here is the is the translation that I'm using. So the answer. Yes, well done, T.J. Richards. The answer is going to actually be 4, 3. It's going to be this point somewhere here. It's going to drop down. It's going to go up, sorry. No, it's going to drop down. Because this is 4 here. It's This is 2 here now, and this goes to like about 4. This was 4 here, and it goes to about 3. So, this is the point now. Uh, actually, they call this point P. So, that's just a quick look at how translation would work. It's kind of easy. I think most people understand translation. It's kind of easy. You just add an only vector and you get a new point. Add only vector and get a new point. Control my mongrel. This dog in the back shots. That dog is just, he might back all night and all. They just need to phase all that dog. Right. So, um, that's not my dog. That's the name of my dog. You're ridiculous. Let me just, let's, let's go on to the, let's go on to the, matrix um, translation there now. Let's pull up some of, one of the questions. Maybe, so January 2018, that come in January 2018? Let's see. January 2018, where are you, my friend? January 2018, there you are. Hmm, this paper real bootleg. Boy. So let's tell me about matrix transformation in January 2018. Two men in this eating. It's a no matrix transformation here. There's a setup. May 2018. Okay, let's check May 2018 then. Um, May 2018. We want a translation question, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah. May 2018, taking it time to load. I got maths tomorrow, and I don't know. <laughs> so, block that man that's talking about statistics and failure. But I can't even see, I can't even, them, the chat's switching so fast, I can't even see to block anybody really. Um, what is the value? I'm looking for May for May 2018. Paper not loading up. June 2018. They say there's oh that translation in June 2018 was kind of food. It wasn't it wasn't that bad. I think I remember our translation and I'm talking about. I did that paper last year. Right? This paper one fit mean pass. That's killing me, January, 20, January 2017. Vectors and matrices. Matrices is what we're doing right now. I've seen some real ridiculous comments here. Oi, paper, load now, boy. What's going on, boy, paper, boy? All that pressure to load, boy. <laughs> In the meanwhile, let me check. Where's the other one they say to check to buy? Um, the other one to check is January 2014, they say. Right. January 2014. So in the meanwhile, I pull up this January 2014. Here. In the meanwhile, this is January 2014 paper, right? Bam. So y'all can see that January 2014, 2100 people. The matrix T is such that that right T is equal to that. Determine T inverse the matrix of T. Well, that's not a chance. 
transformation there, but we could do it nevertheless. So you know to find the inverse, you could use your calculator. So let me show you. I will do it on the calculator, show you how to find the inverse on this calculator if you have it. And then I'll show you. Actually, let me show you how to do it first, and then I'll show you how I'll do it in that calculator. So first you find the determinant of t. The determinant of t is equal to a d minus b c, which will be, and you know this is a b c d, right? So this is going to be 2 by 3. I just put the dot in the center there, which means multiply, but let me put brackets since we are customer that. 3 take away um, negative 1 by 1. So this is going to be 6 plus 1. It's going to be 7. So 7 is the determinant. Well done, source. And we already know that the adjoint, so you write the formula for the adjoint of t, which is going to be um, d a and you put you put negative sign here to indicate a switch up which is going to be 3 2 1 negative 1 all right um so this is the adjoint and now the inverse of t you can write it like this t inverse so you can write inverse of t is going to be equal to 1 over the determinant by the adjoint let me just bring you up a little bit. Big man. Trying to copy this whole thing. Come on, day. By the adjoint, which is 1 over 7, by this 3, 1, negative 1, 2. Everybody going to get a little taste of 7. Well done, source again. Well done, well done. So you get 3 over 7, negative 1 over 7, 1 over 7, 2 over 7. All right? So that's the inverse of T. You're getting 3 marks for that. You roll out with your marks. Then the matrix T maps the point A B onto the point that determine the values of A and B. The matrix T maps the points A B onto the points that. So this is like a classical transformation question. Let's see how we'll do this. So or oh, you all wanted to see how to find the inverse on the calculator too. Let's see how to find the inverse on the calculator. Let me bring up the calculator. First things first, you change the calculator. You press on change the calculator into matrix mode. So I press mode and then I'm pressing 6. Then I press matrix A by pressing 1. Nice. Then I am going to select 2 by 2 because it's a 2 by 2 matrix that I want. 5. Then I put in the matrix 2. Press equal is enter. Negative 1. Negative. One. Oh, I press two negative signs for by one equal is enter. Then I press one, press equal, then press three, press equal, and I can press AC to just freshen the screen up there. Then I'm going to press shift, shift. You notice that S come up there to indicate that I press shift, and I'm pressing matrix now, and I'm going to bring up matrix A by pressing three. So I press shift matrix which is number four shift number four and then i press three to bring up matrix a now i'm using this button which indicates inverse and i press equal bam and there it is and i can go through the numbers this is three over seven we got that here we got that here right three over seven we got that there um remember they're showing it in decimals where you can click on the number to see the fraction negative one over seven we got that there and 2 over 7 and 1 over 7. Amazing, right? For those of you who have seen this for the first time, but those who are accustomed to my channel know I've been talking about this sharp and the Casio calculators that can do this long, 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 long time. People must see how this calculator like, damn, I didn't know my calculator could do that. The matrix T maps. All right, so we're going on to part 2 now. The matrix T maps the point A, B onto this point, determine the values of A and B. Remember, with the chat button, you can always minimize the chat, but the chat is just where once the action is happening. The matrix T maps the point A, B onto the point 4, 9, determine the values of A and B. Matrix T. So, A, B. The matrix T 
multiplied by AB, it performed that operation on AB and we got we got 49. 49. So this is the setup here that we're gonna use to solve for A and B. And we are accustomed with this. If you're doing matrices, if you practice and revise matrices, you'll be very accustomed with this. When you're in this settings, when you have, when you got this setting, you need to now say A B is equal to T inverse by this matrix on the outside here. Why did we do that? Because you bring it across. You take this and bring it across to here. And when you bring across the matrix, it switches into the inverse. The fun thing about this is usually in a matrix question, you'd have found the inverse from before. So it's not like you had to go and find the inverse fresh again. We already worked out the inverse, it's over here. And we double check it on our calculator. Now, I'm going to show you something even sick. You can multiply on your calculator one time to get the ans answer. I'll show you how to do that. But first, let me do it by hand. 3, 7, 1, 7, negative 1, 7. 3, 7, 1, 7, negative 1, 7, and 2, 7. And the last, and the number here is 4 and 9. Now we need to multiply to find the answer. It will be 3 7 by 4, which is 12 7 right? 3 7 by 4, and then 1 7 by 9, you're adding on that, which is 9 7 So that's the first number on top. I didn't see no answers. I didn't see no answers. Or oh, equal 3, Ashona. Ashona holding on the all right, cornbread. Well done, cornbread. <laughs> My name is Cornbread, yes. Well done, Cornbread. So lend me a calculator now. Um, yeah. H3B is 2. H3B is 2. Alright, so then you do negative 7, 1, 7 by 4. Negative 1, 7 by 4, you get 4 over 7. Negative 2, 7 by 9, you get 2 by 9 is 18 over 7. Now, remember, if you're not good in fractions and you can't do it in your mind, just do this on your calculator. Just see, like I'll show you this one. I'll show you 2, 7 by 9. You, you bring up your calculator and you type out. Where do you have this calculator gone? You type out. I, I'll need to switch back on mode. Mode one. You type out this. Um, what I want to do? Two, multiply two seven by nine. Two down seven times. And if the time show up there, there's a problem. You can't pay there. So you need to use this arrow. Come across there by nine. Let's put in your multiply sign there. That's the answer. Eighteen over seven, which is what we got over here, right? So when we add this up, we'll get twenty-one over seven, and we'll also get uh, fourteen over seven. Once again, you could use these additions on your calculator. So you're going to get three, two as your answer. This means A is three, and B is two. That's it. Four marks. Now, now I'll show you how to do this entire thing. This entire, <clears throat> this entire thing over here on your calculator, straight up. <clears> or <throat> to double check it on your calculator. So if you have time, exam finish, and you want to double check and make sure that you're right, that you're right. So I'm going back in mode. I'm going to press matrices six. So I'm in matrix mode now. Let's type in what matrix A is because since I switched mode, they forgot what matrix it is. But if you stayed in the mode, they would have it recorded, right? So I'm pressing it's a it's five to let them know it's a two by two matrix that I want. So I'm pressing five. I'm gonna put in the value of t. I don't need to put in the inverse, I'm putting in t because I could already find the inverse. Two equal one. I think this was negative one equals what just happened there? Back it up, back it up. Oh I put it negative on the wrong side. So negative Come, 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 behave yourself, behave yourself. One, this trackpad. Um, <clears throat> one, my voice can't be going so early in the night, boy. One, three. So now that I type in the matrix, now that I type in the matrix, I can press AC. And let's type in another matrix. Let's press back mode. Let's press back matrix and let's type in matrix B. Two. And what am I, guess what I'm going to put for matrix B? I'm going to put this matrix here. Four, nine. This is a two by one matrix, a two by one. So I'll press six since that is two by one. And I'm just going to put four, press equal, press nine, press equal. Now the calculator is ready to do all the work for you. All the work, 
all the work the calculator is ready to do for you. So I'm going to recall matrix A, which is the first matrix, which is T really, right? Remember that is really T. So I'm recalling matrix T using the method I showed you just now. I want the inverse of T, because remember it's T inverse by this 4-9 matrix here. And what was the 4-9 matrix? The 4-9 matrix, we set that to be B. So I'm going to press Shift and 4 and select matrix B, 4. So we have the inverse of the inverse multiplied by 4, 9. Press that, press equal, and you get your answer 3 and 2. It, seem, it may seem a little complicated, but if you do it a few times, you realize how very easy it is. Right? Um, and it's a nice little trick you can use to double check your matrices question and make sure you didn't mess up a sign along the way. <coughs> Beautiful, isn't it? All right, so let's let's look at the next transformation. So that is the transformation here. So I need to take away from that in terms of transformation. The transformation is done on the on the coef on like this is the transformation here, and it was done on a point, and we had the point A B. The transformations matrix is multiplied by before. You don't try and put the T on this side. You put the T before because that's how it will work. This is a two by two, and this is a two by one. So these two numbers need to be the same, and you're going to end up with a 2 by 1. So you're going to end up with an answer here, x, y, and just now the answer is 4, 9. Oh, sorry, the calculator blocking. I wonder if I see all of that. Yeah, I think you see all of that. All right. Could we do a next, a next transformation? Yeah, we could do an extra transformation. Don't worry, if the chat looking like nobody listening, I'm sure thousand plus people listening. But it's just, it has some real noisy people in the chat. It's like a class that I can't stay quiet, right? I saw the classes. It's vibes, it's vibes. Um, so, let me see if this paper that's set to load, finish, load now, because that paper is taking forever to load. Last year paper, June 2018. Damn, this paper long, like long time. What are you saying? This was a transformation as well. Indeed, it was. So let's let's scrap this transformation from last year. If the chat is bothering you, the chat is not bothering me. I like the chat. If the chat is bothering you, you could always come out the chat and just watch me alone. I mean, I am am I not entertainment enough for you? But um, <laughs> if you want to be in the you want to be in the heat of the chat, well, you could free up yourself. Now. This video we go in, we go in until like about 12 o'clock, and then I'll cut it and give people a chance to go over my other videos. If I go whole night, I feel I'll be rubbing you a little more chance because some of my videos are more short and concise. This revision session more elaborate and you know the transformation t is defined by the matrix T. T is that. T is that. Yeah, I'll do some circle terms next. I'll do some circle terms next. I'll definitely do some binary. The point A is mapped to the point A prime under T. So find the value of A and B. So this is very, very, very similar. Let's take a look at this. But we may be able to use another method for this. We may be able to use a little, a little, a little cheat method kind of way for this, which is what they expect it to be, right? T by A gave us, <laughs> sorry, a prime. So t by a gave us a prime, right? Remember, we're multiplying t by a. That's how the matrix transformation is going. So let's set that up. We have 2, negative 1, 2, 0, by a is negative 2, 3, gave us a, b. So when it's like this, last time the a and the b was on this side. Now the A and the B is here. When it's like this, I think the best thing to do is, is what I'm going to do next. Is, is work out, you're using multiplication, a multiplication method to figure it out. You're going to multiply this row by this column. Row by column must be giving you this value, this A. That's A, and I write it like a 9, that's A, let me just fix that. A, O shocks. A, B, right? So this is how you'll do this. You'll see this two fighting up with this thing here, but you can behave yourself now for the people. Two, this two by this negative two 
So 2 by negative 2, so it'll be like 2 times negative 2, let me brackets down that, plus negative 1 by 3, because you're doing a row by column now, you slide along the row and then slide down the column. Negative 1 by 3, giving us A. So this row by this column gave us that A. And you just work out that. Right, I've seen answers like rain, answers like rain. Though a little while of the chat, the chat will not hush. You can tell this. You can tell two thousand people to hush. Go ahead, tell them to hush and see if they can stop. Tell them to hush. I seen somebody telling the chat to hush. That ain't gonna work, man. It's a, it's not gonna work. The chat will just keep talking. Let them talk. That's that's what the chat is about. I, I think the thing named chat too. Thing named chat. So we, we, it's much chat. All right, and then zero by three would be equal to b. You know what? I should have worked out for. I should have worked out for a what. I should have got for A first before writing big old B day. So let me cut you out of the dance. So what is we got? Negative 4 plus negative 3 equal A. So A is equal to negative 7. That's all again. I see that negative 7 in the dance. A is negative 7. Nice. Let's we got for B now. B, you had to take it up there now. So negative 4 plus 0 is equal to b so b is equal to negative four all right so that's that's good that's good men trying to tell the chat to stop <laughs> negative four uh negative four negative seven um let's do the next part of this determine the transformation matrix that maps a prime to a all right okay all right okay all right Okay, okay, all right, all right. So we went, we went from A to A prime just now, and now these people. Oh, I didn't pop the question. I just, I just, I just hear me say the question. Now these people want us to, to determine the transformation matrix that maps E prime to A. So this is a little knowledge trick here. This is a little knowledge trick here. So. I just want to say good night to the 2200 people that are online watching this live. I still find that unbelievable. I'm just sitting down here in this room here with a with a with a blue curtain behind me here just doing some maths and 2200 people on here watching this. And I know half of them saying, So why are you stopping to tell me this? Do the questions and I'm gonna do the question. Determine the transformation matrix that maps A prime to A. Alright, so we went from A to A prime just now, right? We went from A to A prime. A prime, A prime, whatever, A dash, A prime, T by A, A prime, good night, Sasha. Um, T by A gives you A prime, so A is going to be, so if you want to go the other way around, what is the transformation you had to do? As I, as I was saying, it's a little trick. If you want to go the, if you want to go back, yeah. what you know about, what you know about maths? If you go this way and you go back, what is happening? Is you just get the, it's get the inverse, the inverse of t. Well done, Christine Richard Singh. So you get the inverse, right? So the if a matrix t send a to a prime, to send a prime to a, we need to multiply by t inverse. Why are feeling a little insecure about that four boy? <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. Whoever. We will look at that. So I was just checking out different situations in my mind. Eh? So if t is equal to 2, negative 1, 2, 0. Big singer, all you don't know, all you don't know. So we just had to find the inverse. I don't think all you need me to work out the inverse again. Well, you need me to work out the inverse again. Everybody know how to find the inverse, and I do this question already. We'll just be wasting time for work out the inverse. Uh, let's see what's the next part of this question. Ding, ding, ding. Now everybody at Discord. I thought of making Discord um, symbols, but never, not everybody have Discord. This piece of question here is going to be useful. <sighs> 
this piece of question here is useful. Find the single transformation, the single two by two matrix transformation that is a combine of T followed by P. I'll leave out something on. Oh yeah, I'll leave out what P is. I'll let bear with me here, bear with me here. The screenshot game now is good as Somalia. I know, I know Somalia when it comes to screenshotting, I lazy, I lazy kings and queens. I know that because I, I'm a teacher in a school. And once the tarab is be coming off of people screenshot this chat with that one and all kind of thing. So I know some of these, the screenshot bosses out here. I know, I know starting. So another transformation, um, P is defined by that. So we want T followed by P. T followed by P. We want to hit them with a T, then hit them with a P. So it's work like this. If you do T followed by P, the final, the combined, the combined transformation. Now you say we call it combined transformation, the combined transformation, because what else we will call it? The combined transformation. If you do T followed by P, you need to multiply P by T. That's just how it works. You multiply the last one by the first one, and that's the end. Well done, Chad. Well done, Chad. Chad. Chad for the people. So P by T, so all it is are matrix multiplication. Since I didn't do no matrix multiplication yet, I'll do all this one. 2, negative 1, 2, 0. Obviously, I can do this on the fancy calculator again. 2, 0. So I'll just do this up on my calculator. And call that judge. 2, negative 1, 2, 0. And what P is? P. Earlier, 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 earlier. I'm typing in T right now. 2, negative 1, 2, 0. 2, negative 1, 2, 0. This isn't that hard to multiply, so I mean, you need to calculator to double check would be a, will be like an overkill. But we got the calculator still. So you bring up your calculator, boops. Bring up your calculator, bips. Bring up your calculator, boops. Write it up there now. Let's see in that day. I'm gonna just make it a little bigger for the people. For the people. And don't forget to press like on the video. Eh? Let the thing look good. Let the video look good. Then I bring up this. So now we have matrix A and matrix B inside. Remember we had that from last time. So I need to I need to get rid of that. I need to reset my matrix A and matrix B. So I'm pressing six. I'm going through it a little faster now to to lay out see how fast it could be done. Um, you remember they have the old, they have the old values we have there. So I'm just changing it around. I did this just now. How we get in this values? So. Bam, bim, bim, boom, bam. And it, it will be even much faster if I could use my, I could actually use my calculator like this, right? Um, so A is set there. A, A is set, which is really P. And now I'm going to set another matrix. Let's call that B, matrix B. And that's going to be a 2 by 2 as well. And I'm going to put in 2, not 22, but 2. Every time I press equalize, like enter, then I'm pressing negative 1. Then I'm pressing one, no two, sorry, and zero, right? I'm just waiting to make sure zero, right? So on, and now I'm just going to press matrix A by matrix B. That's it. Shift matrix A. I can multiply matrix A by a number if I want, but I don't want to do that. I want to multiply matrix A by matrix B. Press equal, and that's the answer. <laughs> negative two, negative one. That's a weird transformation. So that's the answer there. Let me see what the chat saying. Say like a fed up boy. Fed up. I know getting started. We added them both. No, we multiplying. So the one of the, the very first video tutorials I did was on matrix transformation, was on matrices, the whole of matrices, except transformation, the whole of matrices. So you could go and check it out, go in spring of matrices, right? What are we doing next? We want to do some circle geometry. What are we doing next? This country, this question have any more in it? Hence, find the image of P. Yeah, we want you to find the image of a point after the transformation in this question, which I think is, is simple, it's straightforward. Uh, this is it. So you're just going to take this and multiply it by this. And assign you put the 1, 4 here. And the combined transformation. 
If combined transformation, you're going to write it there 2, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 0, negative 2, negative 1. I know most people just can, can never get enough of circle geometry in their life, so we do some circle geometry. And you record that and you get your answer. Remember to multiply row by column, row by column. If you want to see the answer, I did this video already. Just search Cohen Springer 2018. Okay, let's do some circle geometry. Let's see how good you all are. Can you all name all the all the terms? I'm going to go through some of the terms here. I'm just going through them at the top of my head. The the most important one I'll start. One of the most important one I'll start with is um, not really the most important, but it, it just know it comes a lot. That's a little too big. It just obstructing my my vibes right now. So let me bring that circle there. Let me bring this here. So let me try and make the line be a little straight now. So if we had this line here, so obviously I could go through this whole thing again. Um this this angle here is be 90 degrees. The angle between a radius and a tangent is 90 degrees. Then you have the next one if you draw a line straight across the diameter. Well you know this is 180 degrees, but if you draw two straight lines here. Connecting the edges, the angles in a semicircle is also 90 degrees. Then there's this one. If you have the, this is not really one, but you should know this. If you have a circle, uh, a triangle inside a circle starting from the center, then this is an isosceles triangle. The two base angles here are equal. You should know that. Then you should know the, this very vital one. This is the one that cracks the code sometimes. If you have, if you have chord and then there's a tangent the angle between the chord and the tangent is if there's a triangle up here if you make a triangle with it a triangle it could be anyhow this angle here must be equal to the opposite angle in the triangle that's called the alternate segment term angle subtended between a chord and a tangent is equal to the angle subtended by the end of the same chord okay that kind of stated weird um, so if you guys dice my set tomorrow, this calculator have to give me a tree. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? What else? What, what, what are rules we have? What are rules we have? Then there's this. There's a lot of. There's some rules regarding chords. Like if you have a chord and you draw an angle there and then you draw an next angle here, these two angles are equal. Right? Angles from a same chord, common chord are equal. Um, what else? What, what are the rules am I leaving out? What are the rules am I leaving out? There's the one with the, with the cyclic quadrilateral. Back, back, back. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are equal. Um, not equal, are e add up to 180 degrees. You should know that. There's also the one that if you have a point outside of the circle and you draw tangents, 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 come on, man. Tangents there, you know. Well, you already know this is 90 degrees. But if you connect here, this is an isosceles triangle, so the base angles are equal. Um, because the, this, the length of this line here is also equal. So you have to have all these rules swimming around in your head. Yeah, I'm speeding through the rules. Uh, the reason I realize I need to speed through the rules is because I already do it already. And I have to get to the questions and explain some questions. You need to understand what kind of session this is. I'd, I'd appeal to most of the audience. I can't go through. If I slow down on the rules, I'll be wasting people's time. Who already know it already? I just refreshing it, refreshing it. This is not like the teaching session. If you want to go through the teaching session, just look up Cohen Springer Circle Geometry and you can go through it slowly. Do it quick so you can't slow down. Yeah, can't slow down. Can't slow down. All right. So yeah, right. I was going and do it slow, but I realized I did it fast. Um, right. So let's start to do some questions now. We just do random questions. Random questions. The most like the good students would have done the last 20 years of circle geometry, believe it or not. So we're just doing some random questions here. And in 2018, so I might as well pull down 2018. I might as well pull 2018 into dance. I'm also thinking of studying G. Why well, started doing math, studying ge geography, and seeing if I could pull in, if I could bring up myself back to that distinction level in geography so I could teach you that. One time, all the geo people. Let me see all who doing geo in the in the um in the chat. Let me see all who doing geo in the chat. If you're doing geo in the chat, say fire. <laughs> if you're doing geo in the chat, write fire. Let me see. So let's see the angles that they want us to find here. Angles that they want us to find. 
Geo, 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 me, 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 fire, 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 real plenty people, real plenty people. So they want us to find A, B, C, C, M, D, A, B, C, A, B, C, C, M, D, or C, M, D, or C, no, C, M, D, real plenty people, bring water, bring water, bring water, C, M, B, N, C, M, and CM. Alright. Is that it? Is that it? Are you satisfied? Are you entertained? Yeah, so I know. Somebody saying water. I know, I know. If I do that geo, it would be well appreciated. So I'll do some geo past papers, maybe multiple choice, maybe something. Next tomorrow we'll we'll do some geo for sure. Right? Alright, let's keep going. What's the time now? Is the time? Nine o'clock, so we are time, we are time. Let's find the angle A, B, C. A, B, C. This angle, how are we going to find that angle? When you write the angle, as I've seen people write it 32, which is correct. But when you write the angle, state Y. State Y. Let me see the first person to state Y and put the answer. Deep in the chat here. Deep in the chat. A, B, C is 32. 32, 32, 32, 32, 32. People talking about KFC, chemical physics, not multiple choice, but, but or people do want me to do multiple choice in geo, they want me to do some other thing. Try and do um some what 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 are they carried it? Angles in a semicircle is 90. Yes, Shemaya. You know, it had two thousand two hundred people here, and I still see all the usual suspects from when I had like when I have like fifty people in the live and thing. I still see the, name, the same names answer any questions and I see yeah, pay the answer. Alright, so I don't think I can work with each other. I just need to work fast. Alright, so ABC is equal to 32. That's correct. I'll just ask all the answers for them then quickly. And the reason it's 32 is because this angle here is 90 degrees. So you need to start off by saying angles in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Then angles in a triangle and up to 180 degrees. So 180 take away 90 plus 58 would equal to that 32. So you write out that whole thing. If you want to see exactly how to write out the question, <sighs> look up my look up my videos on circle geometry immediately after this live. CMB, CMB, CMB. What's the angle CMB and and what's the reason behind it? Where's my where's my thing? CMB. CMB. What's that angle? What's the reason? Well done. Well done, whoever got that out. So yes, it is 122 here because we're looking at the opposite angle in the cyclic quadrilateral. You're supposed to identify that there's a cyclic quadrilateral hiding out here. Anytime you're reaching a circle geometry question, you immediately look for a cyclic quadrilateral. You know, that's really coming handy. I think that's be one of the easiest rules to see, actually. So this one is 122. And what is NCM? What is NCM? NCM NCM And how did we find out what NCM is? NVM is 32 Ah, uh, yeah, 32, and what is the reason? NCM, NCM is which angle? This angle here, NCM, 32 degrees. Somebody saying alternate angle seg segment. Well, I think some people must be watching this here and that here, which is interesting. Alternate angle segment. Uh, is that an alternate angle segment? Have a chord? Um, not really. I guess you could probably stretch it. But the, re the, way, the way I would work out this is the 122 here. You take it away from the. You take it away from the 180. You get back your 58. And this side, because this is a straight line. And then you need to add it to get 90 degrees because this here is already 90 degrees, right? 180 take away 122, 50 degrees, and the angles in a triangle. So, uh, whatever way you used to work it out, good. Just make sure you explain yourself 
explain yourself like a boss. Excuse me. All kind of thing acting up here because no sleep. When you no sleep, your immune system is starting to go down. So make sure you're eating healthy and try and get as much sleep as possible. Don't do like me and sleep two hours at the end of kind of time. Sure, I think I'm sleeping a little more these days. So with circle term, all you want me to do, pick a circle term question. Pick another circle term question and we're doing it. Caribbean people, pick a circle term question and we shall be doing it. So slow down and stop being cringy. Wow. <laughs> um, I can slow down, but the being cringy part, it's tough for me, man. It's tough. The being cringy. That is like that is like my trademark, day boy. If you all don't pass the 2012, 2016, 2016, 2017, 2013, Lord have mercy. The most one I see in there is 2015. You wanna see in the most is 2015 <laughs> and 2019 me. <laughs> Alright, 2015 and 2019 me. If I whip out 2019 me question here, that will blow down the whole internet. Alright, 2015 and 2011. So let me see if I can find 2011 me and 2015. So 2011 and 2015 me. Okay, so I'm on 2011. 2011 load up. Let's see what this big 2011 is about. 2011 has been snapped. 2011 is now about to make an appearance. Over here, so. Bam. And let's see what we need to solve. XYZ. So we need to get XYZ. Go ahead and get XYZ, people. How are we getting XYZ? How are we getting X, Y, and Z? First, you need to identify where X, Y, Z. By the way, the angle in the center here, this is X, Y, Z, right? So, X, Y, Z is there. Going, I miss a bit important comment there, and it's a way for me to find back that comment. Yeah, boy, it's a reality. Cyclic quadrilateral. Cyclic quadrilateral. Yep. So we're using the cyclic quadrilateral rule here, in that this is opposite to this, and you identify, remember I tell you, look out for them quadrilaterals, a cyclic quadrilateral, remember all sides must touch the circle, eh? so that cyclic quadrilateral is there, um, and since that's there, since that is there, we could just, 112 a leg, eh? Is the answer they get 116 or oh. right? Yeah, that's correct. So 116, yeah, they must cyclic quadrilateral opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So 116, good. What is the next one we want to get? Y X Z, Y X Z, Y X Z. How are we getting Y X Z angle? Y X. Let's find out Y X Z. It's Y X. Y, X, Z. Oh, that little tiny little chunks of an angle inside here. Yeah. What's that angle? How are we getting that angle? Somebody just say a comment there. My math teacher said that for multiple choice we'll have from this year, January 2019. And yeah, the multiple choice will have that. It repeating. Multiple choice will repeating. And I'll have deleting the multiple choice video when I finish the live. So... If you had to go and watch them, if you had to go and write down answers or watch it or whatever, go ahead and do it. People getting 23. Yes, so how are you getting 23 now? Well, you look across here, you see that this angle is 23. So how they get that 23 is that this is between a chord here and a tangent here. Angle between a chord and a tangent and you use the alternate segment theorem is equal to the angle in the opposite side there. So that's 23 as well. Let's see what's the next, what's the next thing. Next thing is O, X, C. Now, you can't just put answers like how I'm putting it here. I'm just doing it quick. I'm just doing it quick. A lot of people download it already. Um, o, O, X, Z. O, X, Z. O, X, Z. O, X, Z. Where's X again? So, we want this angle. O, X, Z. Oi. What is little snip of an angle here? How are we going to find the angle now? 
Oh, we going to find that angle now, people. So what is OXC? So sometimes you need to combine a couple of rules just to find just to find what it is you want to find. So as they are saying, the rule here is that this is 64, and I didn't mention this when I was going through the rules, but the angle at the circumference is half of the angle at the center. So if this is 64, it means this is 128. And you know already this is an isosceles triangle, so the base angles must be equal. So the base angles must add up to 180 take away 128. These remaining two angles must add up to, with this 128 to make um, to make 180 degrees. So 180 take away 120 is 52, and 52 divided by 2 is 26 degrees. All right, let me see some whys in the chat if you understand how we got all the angles in this question. Let me see some whys in the chat if you understand how we got all the angles in this question. <sighs> stretches, stretches. All right, so one X. All you want to do an X circle geometry question? Chat, talk to me, talk to me, chat. You doing an X circle geometry question? Bring up our next one. Remember, if you need more explanation, if you need more explanation, I know all you love to watch me and my, um, the cringy self, this is what the person say. Um, but you can go ahead and watch the video on circle geometry for if you need more explanation. Yes, do another one. Two more, please. All you love any circle geometry. All you just want them to ask all your circle geometry right through in the exam alone. All right, CXC, bring circle geometry right through for these suckers. All right, 2015. 2015, that was 20, 2011. Let me see 2015 load up. 2015, May, June. I do that already, 2015. Maybe fine in 2015. Uh, yes, do profit and loss. You really serious with profit and loss, man? Serious about that? Profit and loss, man? I mean, if profit and loss, if you, I mean, a little concerning. Profit and loss, it's profit and loss, I say. But, but where is circle geometry question from 2015? No. I'll call her next year and I'll see my circle geometry thing in 2015. Call her next year, call her next year. Can't even find this, this, this question. Jan 2019. People say in Jan 2019. I do that just now, I'm gonna check and see. Jan 2019 and that's the Lindana area thing. I'll make sure they're good in that Lindana area thing. Eh? Alright, so let's do the Jan 2019 then. Snapped. Pull it up. Chat, and you could agree on what topic we do next after we do a few more circle geometry. Seeing linear programming, linear programming, vectors, 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 binary and functions. I will do binary next. I'll touch the binary next again. And then I'll do, well, we just do bearings. Some people come on not later. We just do some bearings. You could go back to bearings if all you want to, you know. Seeing angle of elevation, quadratics, bearings, linear programming, completing the square, all kind of thing. All kind of things showing up here. All right, so what's the angles that they want us to find in this one? <laughs> Excuse. So the first angle we want to find is PTR. PTR. Next angle that I want you to find is TPQ. Next, next, next angle that I want you to find is obtuse angle POR, where O is the center of the circle. POR. Hmm? They didn't even show you O, so that's going to be a C. That's going to be interesting. So these are the angles that we need to find. 
do the cylinder thing here. Yeah. I must do some cylinder thing before. So I'll do the cylinder question too. I see a lot of linear programming, so it looks like I need to touch that again. Linear programming is BRC. It's BRC, yeah, but we can do it. All right, so PTR. Well, PTR is free max because yeah, that's that's we. I think this is one of the easiest ones to find when you see a thing going so and you see something going so. You know that's supposed to be equal. Make sure you state why it's equal. Eh? Angles from a common cone, the same segments are equal, right? So we have 75 degrees. TPQ now, TPQ, where's TPQ, TPQ, what's the, ang what's the value of this angle here? How are we going to get that angle? Well, if you look across here, if you, if you would turn your attention over to this side of the screen, you would see that you would notice that there's a straight line here. So it means that this angle here is actually 120. And the reason I'm finding that angle is because lo and behold, there's a cyclic quadrilateral lining inside here. So if I know that's 120, then I can put in 60 degrees here to complete the 180, because opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are, are, are equal to 180. So this is 60 degrees. And POR now, this is the this is the killer. This is the killer. Let me, let me, we need to put in POR because O is not in the triangle. So let's say O is somewhere here. They didn't say that this is O. We don't know that that is O. So P O R. P O R. How are we going to find this angle here? P O R. What is P O R? Well, we need to realize that it come from the PR. It come from the PR. They come from that common chord PR. Although they didn't connect PR together, it's a common chord, and the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center. So PR is equal to 75 times 2 which is 150. Don't forget, you need to state the reason, and if you want to know how to state the reasons, look at my video on circle geometry. Okay, what year now? What year? What year? What year? What year? What year? Okay, I just gonna yeah, down a, a random year here. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go back in the past. Let's see what January 2007 had for us. Scroll, 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 scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, down. Oh, just a, just a little simple, just a little simple one from January 2007, a nice little simple one for the people. This question here was definitely for the people. I guess I never do a little dance if I see a question come like this. Imagine if, what's this question? Eh? If I see a question come like this, people will say, yes, the Lord is blessing us. Hey, I pray in for you, I pray in for you that they, they go easy and there. And all the acts you need to find is two is two angles. M and L L and L M O. That's the two angles they asked you to find. Yeah, so I hope all they do really good in the exam. I know the channel help a lot of people, but I know I just hope some people in and think the channel, just watching the channel is and that's be one of my nightmares as we sit on my I hope no student think just watching me alone would make them pass. You actually need to put in the work too. You actually need to put in the work. And as some people think, okay, I watch the channel like I just think. I, I don't want nobody to get false hopes now. That's why I'm going to have a actual math lessons on this channel. Right? So people who inform for who will be doing it or anything like that. None of y'all will do. Everybody here, all 200, all 2351 of y'all going to pass. But other people now. Um, <laughs> so M N L. Well, you know this is half. We just do this. This will be half there, right? So you're you're looking at a what boy? You're looking at a um, 55 degrees. And here, these two angles here need to add up to finish the 180. And you know that they are equal, right? Because they come from a now, this is the radius, and that's the radius with so the isosceles triangle. So the base angles are equal. So you're looking at um, 35 degrees. 35 and 35 is 70 plus thing, right? So this is 35 degrees. So that's an easy question. So if this come, are they going to dance? Now you do one more now. One more. That one was just too easy. We could, we could probably do one more. Let's look at 2010. 
We do bearings already. We do bearings already. If we're doing bearings, you have to do some more things before we come back to bearings. So 2010 was a little different. So I think 2010 is a nice question to copy. 2010 was different. Let's bring him up. Your time to shine, 2010. 2010. The people want to see you. All right, people, take a look at 2010 there. I'm just see what it is. See what it is. Hey, 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 go back to 2010. You see what it is, the what we to do. PTR, TPR, TSR, PTR, TSR, and what? PSR? TSR is the last one. Oh gosh, I just messed up this. PTR. TPR, what kind of tongue to start is this one? TPR, and I forget already. TSR, TSR. All right. All right, so PTR, TPR, and TSR. So a lot of people download the multiple choice video. I mean, I, I no problem with that. I can't, I can't like, it's not like I could go in your computer home and say, don't download that. <laughs> so you do what you have to do but I'm taking it down right I'm taking it down after this live because I received a letter from CXC and um, yes 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 my head blocking I move it I move it oh god um, and I have some other things that I need to make sure that I'm on par with so I'm not going to have that uh, multi -choice, choice with you but I really want to help you all I wish I could have it up but it's just not with it right now so PTR PTR, this angle here. How are we going to find that angle there, people? Come on, people, hit me PTR. Angles of elevation, depression, what month thing, blah, blah. What month? What month? So don't remove it. I have to remove it. Um, this is... This is... This is 2010. This is something in 2010. Does the month matter? Either January or May, right? So this is, this is 46 degrees. If you didn't catch it, why yet? A lot of people didn't catch it is because it's alternate. It's an alternate segment term question taking place here. There's a chord, there's a tangent, bam, and it's a triangle. That's the, that's the pieces that you want to align before you can just whip all that. So don't forget to state alternate segment term. And when you're stating it, remember, go up on my, go up on my channel and see how to state it. Because when you're stating it, you want to kind of practice labeling. Like, you'll see... Angle between a tangent and a right PQ and a chord and a right PR is equal to the opposite angle in the alternating segment and a right PTR. Right? That's good enough. TPR, TPR, this angle here. What is that angle there? So we're going to find that angle there, people. We're going to find an angle. Somebody asked me to change the matrices to simultaneous equation. I just, I just did a simultaneous equation matrices question basically there. Alright, so let's show you how you solve this. This is 32. This is 46. The angle's in a triangle, you know. So 32 and 46 is actually 78. So the remaining angle here, the remaining angle here, must be 102. Because it's a, it's a triangle and angles in a triangle add up to... Um, Add up to 180 degrees. So anybody who's saying 90 take away 46, I see a good bit of that just now. 90 take away 46 is not the answer, right? 90 take away 46 is 44. So anybody put 44, get it wrong. There's a little common trick they do there. Oh, angle between a tangent and a radius is 90 degrees. But this is not a radius. as a chord. So you need to use this you need to use the triangle to solve this one. So 46 and 32 is what? 78 degrees. 78 from 180 is 102, which I write here. So the big thing is 102. You take away the 46 now, and you should get 56. 56 and 46 is 102 degrees. So you see why it's now 44, right? I write 50 there, but a little piece of blue. Right, a little piece of blue. Right, so 56. 
That's okay. We, anyway. So TSR, TSR. How are we going to find TSR now, people? Well, you see, once you find TPR, and you give TPR, your yeah, yeah, name TPR 56 degrees, lo and behold, anybody watching the Golden State game, that game starts, I mean, uh, a hole in back here. A hole in back here. Let's see what's going on here. Anybody? Oh yes, boy, the Golden State game start by... You see, let me tell you something. This is real dedication. I show you here. This is real dedication. Because I really want to watch that basketball match so bad. <laughs> um, so this is 56 and right so yeah everybody put the answer already 124 I need to add up to give you I need to add up to give you um 124 degrees <laughs> People on the chat saying this man can real straight, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. That's why it's keeping mind so active. That's why my mind so active. If it wasn't for my personality, I would not have even have a YouTube channel. So I need to take the good with the bad. All right. One more. Oh, what? What is the one? Wait, we doing some binary numbers. And I think last time I didn't actually talk about how to add binary numbers. So, you know, binary numbers are just zeros and ones. And I showed you how to count in binary. You start off with zero, then one, then you'll go to one, zero, then one, one. And then you have to start back again. So you'll have one, zero, zero. Then you'll have one, zero, one. Then you'll have one, one, zero. Then you'll have one, one, one. Then you start back again. One, zero, zero, one. And one, zero, one, zero. And this number here. No, no, sorry. One, zero, one, one. I think this number here was what we had to chance. For, no, no, it was this number. I think in 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 the in January it was this number. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it was six. They wanted you to change six to binary. So this is six in like if you're counting in in, in the decimal system. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So six is one ten. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, I'll add a, um, excuse me with the sign, I see. So 6 is, is, is 110 in binary. So that's like com counting in binary. And binary coming in CXE. Nobody cares about that. that the waste time on that. Okay, okay. Well, then I'll just speak through this. I'll just speak through this topic. But somebody, a lot of people are seeing binary just now. Who the hell acts for basis? Nobody cares about that. <laughs> I'll have some kind of brought up. See, in the way you're talking, please. It's not looking good. All right. Um, linear programming, linear programming. Yeah, so if you're, if, you're, if you're interested in seeing me finish this binary, press Y. If you're interested in me going on to linear programming, press L. Why, 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 why? I have to read the Y's against the L's. I didn't see an L pop up yet. Y versus L. Go ahead with the binary then. Y versus L's. Hmm. Right now it's neck and neck and the Y's are going and the Y's are going and then the L's are coming in the dance. And here the L's come. But there's still a lot of Y's. Y's, Y's. And the Y's seem to be winning. I'm, I'm not even biased for the Y's. The Y's seem to be handling the scene. Okay, L's are showing up in big ways here. Yeah? L's are showing up in big ways here. Yeah? And the Y's are taking over. And the Y's are, the Y's are still holding strong. The Y's are still holding strong. Um, this is a kind of neck and neck and neck and neck and neck. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll compromise and I'll just touch off a little bit of binary. Maybe just show you how to add it, how to convert it, and then speed into linear programming. So I'll do it fast. I'll do it fast. So you need to understand how to go from binary to like base 10 and back and you may also need to know how to go from other bases as well so the quick way you could do it is on your calculator which i showed you how to do last time so you could go and look up that <sighs> that happened in the the big all nighter so you could scan through that and somebody somebody put up some timestamps so you could go and see exactly where is what <sighs> in binary 
or you could actually do it legitimately so if you want to go from binary to base 10 let like you say you had this number 110 you know this is 2 to the power of 0 this is 2 to the power of 1 this is 2 to the power of 2 and this is just a refresher here you multiply this is 0 2 to the power of 1 by 1 that is 2 by 1 so this is 2 and you're adding 2 to the power of 2 is 4 this is 4 by 1 so this is 4 so you add up the numbers and you get 6 to the base 10 so this is how you go from binary to base 10 I did say that I was going to go through it fast. I know for some people this kind of this kind of kill them off, right? Um, but I'm going through it fast, and you could always go back and watch a long video and check it through in detail. And if you want to go backwards, like if you was in six and you want to go to base two, well, you need to divide by two and keep records of the remainder. So two into six is three, remainder zero. Two into three is one, remainder one, and two into one cannot. So you don't bother to put that. You just take this last one this one and this one so the answer is one one zero and that's what we got just now so if you come within back you need to divide if you come within this way you need to multiply by multiply by each of the place values all right and adding this is the last thing here and then we're going into linear programming adding let's say we want to add in base i didn't do this in a while so uh, i might just tumble a little bit but i'll catch myself one let me say we're gonna add these two numbers well one plus one you don't put 2 here because it can't write 2 in binary. In fact, 1 plus 1 in binary is actually this 10 <laughs> or 1, 0, which stands for 2. So 1 plus 1, you're going to write the 0 here and you're going to bring across the 1. Then you'll have 1 plus 1 again. So you're going to write the 0 here and bring across the 1. You have 1 plus 1, bring, write the 0 here and bring across the 1. And I have 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is actually 11. So write the 1 here and bring across the 1. So this is your answer. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. So you could probably replay that sometime tomorrow. Um, hopefully they don't ask you to add. Hopefully they just ask you to convert and stuff like that. Let's move on to linear programming. Linear programming. Let's get a linear programming question. Have some real interesting messages to respond to. So maybe after I do this question, I'll take a break. Maybe. Take a break, turn off the live or something, give you all a chance to revise some other videos and come back in in a half an hour. That should be a plan. That might be the plan. Take a break, give you all a chance to revise, do other things and come back in for the for the last hour. Now, which linear programming question? You'll need to find a linear programming question for me. If you have one that you, you want me to do, type it in the chat quickly. I'm searching through some people say very quickly, but I'm searching through digitally, so it's take my time to kind of scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down. If I had no paper booklets, if I was using that, I'd be able to um, spot the question faster. 27th January 2019. So, I see 2012 first, so let me check 2012. Let me check 2012. Which one in 2012? May 2010. All right, somebody said May 2010. May 2010. Oh, you're taking a little while to spot this people. May 2010. May 2010. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. There is no. Yes, there is a. There is. There is. Right, so this one is okay. So this one should be able to should be able to gather a lot of stuff from this one. A lot of concepts. Um, expand it a little bigger. And there we go. So this is May twenty ten. This is May twenty ten. Take a look at that. Take a look at that and a farmer supplies. I will break a long time. Okay, so people are okay for the break. So yeah, we'll take a break. I'll turn off the live. You all can go for half an hour. I'll come back for half an hour. In that time, I will be watching basketball and trying to catch back my voice a little bit. You know, to start talking softer. Uh, <coughs> our farmer supplies his neighbors with X pine pumpkins and Y melons. So using X and Y, sometimes we use different letters. Using the following conditions. Y is greater than or equal to 3. 
and y is less than or equal to x. <laughs> they give you the conditions. Normal. This one is this. This one. <laughs> This one is not really um, an X game in a serious time. This one is not really um, a tough one. So I might have to do a next one. I might have to do a next one. Yeah, it's not really a tough one. Because you normally ask to do all the inequalities. I think in this one, it just asks you to do the third condition, third inequalities. So the total number of pumpkins and melons must not exceed 12. Total number of pumpkins and melons must not exceed 12. So I don't see any answers, but this means x plus y must be less than or equal to 12. Understand? It can't exceed 12. It can be 12, but it can't exceed 12. So x plus y must be less than or equal to 12. <clears throat> so that's the inequality there. You write that and you're good to go. And now you, you need to draw all of this in a graph and then shade the common region. Right? Draw the graph associated with three inequalities. Identify by shading the region and satisfy the tree. Inequalities. So I'm going to sleep. Just treat the sign as an equal sign. Yeah, thing, Bob. Yeah, Jahil. Yeah. All right, as a Jalil. Yeah. I'm uh, starting to see. No, the number still up. The number still up there. Two close to two hundred twenty three hundred people on. <sighs> no need for ending. Just for end me. <laughs> All right. Let's let's go. Let's go forward. So we put up 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 up. up. We have this. Now remember I told you this graph always takes place in the first quadrant, meaning you don't need to draw the negative sides to this graph. So it's like that. And let's look at the kind of numbers we're dealing with. We're dealing with number 12, 3, and this is the, you're treating the inequality sign like an equal sign as this person said, which is, which is true. Jamaica, St. Kitts, all kind of thing in the, in, in the building. It's a little blurry. That's okay. That's okay. Move this across a little bit there, up. So you know we're going from 12. So let me make 12 look like about up here and 12 look like about down there. This will be six. This will be six. This will be three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They will give you the scale to use. Make sure you use whatever scale they tell you to use. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and I'm writing in, writing in the values here for some of them. This is 0. I'm going to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. They will give you a skill to use. I'm just using my own skill here because I'm in a drawing and not digital piece of paper here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Alright, so the first line, the, the, the important line I'm going to put on is this one because that's like the, that's like the big guns. What, you're treating this line since it's 12 and I truly only really tricked it with just to connect the two 12s to each other when they do it like that. Just like that, eh? x plus y. So let's make this a different color. Let's make this dark blue or something. Alright, boom. So that's that line there. You also have the line where y is equal to x. Boom. So that's about that line there. All along this line, y is going to be equal to x. See that? They line up with each other like that. Why we have the line y equal to x? Because we have an inequality that looks like this. y is less than or equal to x, right? And finally, you have the line y is equal to 3. y is equal to 3. Remember, I just treating it as a... <coughs> as a equal sign for now. So I look for 3 and that's this line here. Boom. Alright, so let's label all of the lines and when you're labeling the lines you use equal y is equal to 3. You have the line y is equal to x and you also have the line y is equal, no, x plus y is equal to 12. x plus y is equal to 12. And we do some shading. But I need to know which region to shade. So watch the inequality sign for a hint. Unless you see this the other way around. Once y in front, you could go ahead with your life. This is less than, this is less than, and this is more than. Only the tree line is more than. Only this line here is more than. All the other lines is less than. Meaning less than, less than for here, and more than for here. And it's very easy to see that the only region that satisfies all inequalities 
would be inside here, right? Now you notice all of them have this sign, more than or equal to, less than or equal to. If it was just a sign like this, then it needs to be dotted. Remember that it normally never comes like that, but if it happened to come, remember it would need to be dotted. All right, so people brain freezing. Your brain can be freezing. Your exam is tomorrow. Um. So what's next? What's next? So we collect all the marks there already. Yeah? We connect all the marks there already. Let's let's see what was next in this question. Determine from your graph the minimum values of x and y which satisfy the condition. So they normally ask you that, or they could ask you something about profit. You create a profit equation and then you do it. You could create a profit equation and then you do it. Somebody say wrap up. All right, I think people really need that break. Right? Go and do, go and study some other stuff on the channel or something like that. The minimum values of x and y, and you all, any the next part of the question is always looking at these points. You're looking at this. It's looking at this or this. So hopefully, hopefully what this live session did is either frighten people into going, st into going and studying what they need to go and study or um, encourage those of you all who know it already like, oh, that easy, this easy, I understand that, I know this, I know that, to, um, to, <laughs> uh, I lost. So, um, break, please, break, please, break, please. Look, your break your view count. I break my view count. Do a quick recap on vectors. My brain overload. Ding, ding, ding. Um, let's go back to the question. Let's go back to the question. This is just that very dis discouraging. All right. So yeah, hopefully it encourage people who um who know they work to that they're where they need to study, where they need to touch up on for the night. But tonight is the last night, eh? right? So go on, when the break, during the break, go and look up the videos. The good thing about this channel is I pretty much do nearly every important thing. You know? All the things you're fighting about, I do it very good in a nice video somewhere. Just look up the topic, know the topic, look it up, and deal with the matters. And if you're a long video too, it has some long videos too. All them live videos in the end, I do some long videos. All right, so let's... This is like the maximum regions, and this is obviously the minimum regions. So the minimum value of x and y would satisfy the condition would be obviously this value here, which looks like which looks like four, four, three, right? So you need to watch the vertices, also known as the points and the region, to take. So some people say no break, some people say no sleep. I am coming back, you know, one hour break. No, 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 half. All right, one hour. Where's the time now? Where's the time now? Uh, half between half an hour and one hour. So, and during that time, you could go and watch the multiple choice because I'm going to delete the multiple choice tonight. So you could go and take any multiple choice. You could go try to stay off our Instagram. I, I will stay off our Instagram and and retweet in your stories and thing. I'll, I'll probably retweet that tomorrow morning, and wish you all the best. So that way it won't distract you. Try not to be distracted. Work on what you need to work on. Put in some good work. Work on the weak areas. I'll come back and touch some other areas. I'll probably touch some easier stuff. We did some hard stuff that could probably scare people. We did maybe the three hardest topics. <clears throat> yeah, completing the square. Okay, I'm coming back to do completing the square. That'll be the last hard thing we're doing. And then after that, I'll just be doing easy stuff to help people who just want to pass the square. So we did three really hard topics. We did bearings, we did matrix transformation, we did linear programming, and we did circle theorems. So that kind of uh, how people edgy, <laughs> edgy. I think we need to bring 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 it back down. So we are coming back to completing the, the square next. But for now, <clears throat> go and take a little break, freshen yourself, go and study, look up the topics that you're frightened about. Um, figure out how to download the multiple choice, look it up online. Um, and we out there, half an hour break, half an hour to hour break. Later, people, it was real nice. <laughs>